pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No, very good. How are you? Good, good, good. All right. All right, on roll call, Mr. Ayer. Uh, Mr. Bartlett is not here. Do you want to do it right now? Uh, at the end. At the end. Uh, Mrs. Brown Knight. Here. Dr. Lewis. Here. Mr. Vanstone. Here. Mr. York. Here. All right, a motion and a second to excuse Mr. Bartlett, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Ayer. Aye. Ms. Brown Knight. Aye. Uh, Dr. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Vanstone. Aye. Mr. York. Aye. All right. All right, we have with us tonight a distinguished guest, uh, Commissioner Driehaus. We'd like to, yeah, please tell us a few things about the county and what we're doing. It would be my pleasure. Thank right. you. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. I appreciate it. I, um, when I was first elected in 2017, I did what I called my 49 and 49 and visited all 49 jurisdictions in the county. Wow. I tried to do it in 49 days. It did not work out because so many <laughs> meet at wow. the same time on the same day. I'm like, yeah, this isn't going to work. Um, but it's, it's, I thought it was time to come back out. Uh, and so I've handed out a menu of opportunity, which I did the first time around. Many of you, of course, were not here when I visited uh, in 2017. But this is a menu of opportunity for partnership. Uh, between your jurisdiction, Marymont, and the county. And so it has been expanded since I offered this last time because we are trying really hard to provide uh, partnership opportunities in many, many different ways, whether it's stormwater or recycling mm. or fire hydrant maintenance or you know, all the things that the county has to offer. Um, these are some of the opportunities available. And I don't think it always occurs to everybody that, oh, th maybe we should you know, look into that. And then um, our contact information for all three county commissioners is on the back. So if you ever need anything or want to reach out, feel free. Uh, my contact information is right there. So I did want to give a brief um, update on the county. So things are good. Uh, we've got a structurally <laughs> balanced budget. I, could not, I didn't say that in 2017 because it wasn't true. Uh -huh. uh, but it is now. And so uh, we are doing well. We've got a robust uh, staff of very good people working for the county. It's important to you because those are your constituents as well as my no. constituents. And when people call 911 or rely on a sheriff's deputy, or uh, rely on someone to make sure kids are safe in their homes in this community, that's us, uh, that's the county. And so we're a bit of a safety net organization. Um, but I, I wanna say that we have had ups and downs with our workforce. Uh, we were in financial straits for a while there, uh, but we, now we are in a, a competitive set when it comes to uh, acknowledging that we want to offer our employees the same uh, benefits that others get in their competitive set throughout other counties, including Warren Butler and you know, that are right next door to us. Um, so some of the big things that are going on at the county would include the convention center mm -hmm. district. I don't know if you've heard about this. It's been in the news a bit. Um, but again, what happens in the core city really does translate out to the other communities, uh, by, especially by way of revenue available to us to partner with everyone. Um, and so the convention center, we're doing a $200 million renovation. Mm along with the city, we're in partnership, you don't always hear that about the county and the city, but it's, that's how we're functioning now. Um, and so we have gotten together and said, we need to renovate that facility to bring in conventions that we're missing right now. Uh, it, I don't know if you've been down there lately, I was just down there this weekend for an event. It is rather tired and rather old and rather gray. Uh, and so we've got a, a redo going on. It will also allow us to eventually uh, expand the exhibit space, which is another critical piece of bringing conventions into our area. And so we're building also, a, 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 actually a private developer will build a hotel to the south um, that will be the headquarter mm. hotel. Mm. So the Millennium came down, and that was ours, the, the county side. The convention center is owned by the city. The property across the street is owned by the port. Three CDC's got some property <laughs> over here, right? And so in the past, we have not come together and done this uh, t as a unit. And so what we have said is we're gonna treat this like a district, and so it's a couple of blocks worth of property owned by uh, you know city, county, port, 3CDC, and we're gonna do this collective work so that we're not hitting and missing each other, right? Mm -hmm. Not doing something here that doesn't make sense to the, mm -hmm. the thing here, right? right? And so we're treating it like a district. A district. 3CDC is on the lead. 
and then the city and the county are uh, participating in the financial stack and, and in all things uh, participating in this. So it's pretty exciting. C bad news is convention center will be closed down for about 18 months. Mm. The good news is when it opens, it's going to be completely different than what you see now with a lot of natural light, much more program space, and we are going to program outside space as well. Close down Elm Street. Am I right? It's Elm. Uh, go across to the green space that was where the Millennium sat and use that as programmable space. Mm for the convention center, which is kind of the new trend if you've been anywhere for a convention lately. So it's pretty exciting stuff. It's in the city, it's also in the county, and it benefits everybody. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the good news. Um, something else I often get asked about is the Bengals, and so I'll just uh, head that off at the pass and tell you that we, uh, the contract expires in 2026. We are in negotiation, we're always in negotiations with yeah. the Bengals, right? We've got all these amendments to the original lease uh, which none of us are all that crazy about, but the amendments have made things better, and we're in partnership with the Bengals at, the mo at this moment. Uh, we're doing some significant renovations in that window of time next year before the team needs to get back on that field, and so the city and the county are participating together to pay for those renovations, which is a new look. It used to be entirely on the county through the sales tax that was approved by the voters uh, to pay for all those renovations. The split is about a 60-40, so the county's in for 60% and the Bengals are in for 40. They've never done that before. Right. And so I'm optimistic about the negotiations, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. if we could uh, hold that line and continue that relationship going into this larger question of what we need to do to renovate the facility, I think that's good news for taxpayers because the taxpayers will be on the hook for less than what we have been, which is about 94% in the past. We're looking to significantly reduce that percentage and have the Bengals contribute the NFL contribute and the state of Ohio contribute, which is what's happening throughout the country when you look at all the other uh, mm -hmm. negotiations that are going on. So we've got a national expert who's done these leases that's uh, advising us, and so we'll try to get it done sooner than later. I always say things like that, and then it doesn't really pan out. But it's, I, I it's continue, always later. I, I continue <laughs> to be optimistic until I shouldn't be, right? If that's how, how it rolls. But we are uh, working on that, and again, yeah, I, you probably know this, but we don't have to replace the stadium because it's in pretty good shape. We've taken care of it. We just have to do renovations now. It's about $500 million, so it's not a small bunch of renovations, um, but we don't have to build a $2 billion stadium So if we want to keep the Bengals here, so and, and that's the end goal. So I just want to give an update on that. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about partnerships. So. I, I'm doing this 49 and 49. I'm, you're probably like 21, maybe, something like that. So I've been to a lot of townships and villages and, and small cities. And as I go around, different communities are partnering with the county in a variety of ways. And some have been more successful than others. I'm proud to report that you all have been pretty darn successful in the partnership with the county through what we have had to offer. So some of those things include CDBG dollars um, at $30,000 for a mini planning grant You've taken advantage of the Residential Recycling Initiative Program, years 21, 22, 23, so you're doing that on a regular basis. And then you got the stormwater grant uh, through ARPA. Mm -hmm. uh, we did, you know, we have a lot of overland flooding and storm water issues in this county, many, many, especially because of the topography in Hamilton County. Um, and so we have not done a lot related to stormwater in the past, and we're starting to get into this space. Uh, and so I think it's a relief to communities to know that you can partner with us. Now these are ARPA dollars, so they're one-time dollars, but it is something we're trying to pay attention to. And I just had a meeting last week with somebody from the uh, US EPA to figure out what other funding streams, maybe through the infrastructure bill, or law I should say, um, are available to us to use and bring down uh, to other communities. So I'm hoping that we continue to do this work with the federal dollars, but that is yet to be seen because I don't mm. know how successful we'll be in that work. And then one last thing, um, and then I'll finish up, and I'm happy to answer questions if you have them. Um, one other thing we've done with our ARPA money, we got uh, this money from the federal government uh, because of COVID, and uh, we did different tranches for emergency relief, for uh, rent relief and small business relief mm. and arts relief. One thing that we did to be more transformational with those dollars is set aside 40 million related to housing and homelessness. And I'm proud to report that one of the tranches that we set aside, so we had this big chunk, and a lot of it is for affordable housing in all different parts of the county, a lot of density going in in the city, some habitat homes going on in other places. Um, so 
we wanted though to hit certain populations and so seniors is one of them people re-entering society is one of them and people with disabilities is one of them and so we are partnering with LAD which is the ultimate <laughs> in the agencies in Hamilton <laughs> County serving mm -hmm. people with disabilities in a way that dignifies those individuals allows them to live independently mm -hmm. in a really smart strategic way it's an expensive proposition but we have set aside I, I think it I don't want to misspeak it's about <laughs> four million yeah. mm -hmm. it's about four million right mm -hmm. now which is a huge chunk from that pot that pots only eight million mm -hmm. which is I mean a, a lot but to get four of it so that's where we are so far I don't want to speak out of turn um, mm -hmm. but I am so grateful that LAD is a part and not every community has LAD right these the, and without LAD we can't do this work and so I'm really excited about the partnership and we are going to build a number of homes for these individuals these are young people with disabilities that can live on their own with just a little bit of support through technology so anyway mm. Susan was a huge part of that without Susan none of that works um, so I'm just bragging for you because it's, it's really good work and we're really excited to partner with you in that. So again, I wanna thank you for the partnership. Whoever, I don't know who takes care of reaching out to us for grants and, and opportunities, but you're doing a great job. Um, I wanna put one on your list. The revitalization grant, something you have not received in the past, um, has opened today. It'll run for about a month. And so if you have any catalytic projects that you need the county to, it's, it's kind of the last money in, but it's significant. It's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, I would encourage you to apply for those dollars um, and see if you're successful. And if you're not successful, don't give up uh, because it's an annual tranche of money that we set aside in our budget uh, for this purpose. What types of projects? It, it depends on the community. But they've been um, in, in Shiviet, it was the you know, the Capels building over in Shiviet. It's on the main drag. Mm -hmm. They needed to repurpose that. And to, I think they tore it down, actually. We helped with that. Um, down in North Bend, they're doing some work along the riverfront with a riverfront park. It's in the floodplain, so you have to be careful. But we are helping them with that project. So it really does differ community to community, but it's generally, it has to be related to economic development and growth for the community, but that's a pretty broad definition. Mm -hmm. uh, so think business district, think things that uh, drive economic development in your community. Yeah, I saw the application today. In fact, yeah, like, yeah, just opened up today. It, today, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Our timing yeah. is perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good. You know, one other um, grant, um, we just were notified a couple weeks ago, we received a waste reduction innovation grant from Hamilton County Resource. Yeah. And um, I'd just like to commend uh, Cher Mooring. Um, she was just a treat to work with and, and oh, uh, work through the whole process with us. And oh, good. Just, I'm glad. Just need to see good government at work like that. It's all about the partnerships. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Any other questions? What are your priorities for the, the coming year? What are you seeing as emerging? We've got the big, you know, you've got the convention uh, center, you've got uh, the Bengals agreement. What do you see as, um, say, the top three county priorities for the next? year and if we're for us as we're figuring our stuff out if we are aligned you know what would that look like i think um some of it is related people are still struggling mm -hmm. in many parts of the county and we have to pay attention to that and so we just put more money into our mortgage relief effort um, folks are struggling to pay property taxes as you might imagine uh, and so we just put seven hundred thousand dollars last week into a mortgage relief fund uh, to help with that. It's the, the entry point to that is 513 relief. And so we're continuing to try to respond to what we hear are the needs in the community. We're also s providing some legal assistance for those in the Board of Revision process and um, helping with appraisals. If people need a reappraisal or an appraisal, I guess, of their property, um, we're trying to help with that and um, give them as much support as they can to uh, reduce the value <coughs> if it should be reduced. And that's a process through the auditor's office with the Board of Revisions. Okay. So it, it's those kinds of things. And, and I don't, it, it's somewhat reactive, um, but as people come in and express to us, you know, this is a problem, we, we need some relief. We're trying to respond to that. And some of these other, um, I, I, I'm personally interested in the banks and building, there are four lots still yet to be developed down there. Um, I'm very interested in finishing that out. There's mm -hmm. one that's, could have some serious density on it, lot 24. And as you may know, GE 
is no longer in the building down there and the city had an agreement with them and we were a secondary signer to that agreement but as they are exiting that market or that building and moving folks to Evendale so they're still staying mm. in the county and mm. and they're doing other things to try to remain you know create a significant footprint here but they are vacating the banks we have asked them in partnership with us given that dynamic to help us create a study to look at those four properties on the banks and they have said yes to that uh, and so we will be working with the Bengals with GE with the city the county to try to finish out some of this really um, necessary economic development down, work down there to the benefit of all the retailers to you know the music venue you know all the stuff that's already going on down there and so so we're thinking along those lines as well yeah from um the perspective, from your perspective, you've come here and said these are the things the county can do to help us. Are there things that the village um, and communities our size can do to be helpful to the work going on at the county level? I think this just a continuing dialogue is really interesting. You know, the, the community revitalization grant was my idea a couple budget cycles ago because I was out talking to communities and they were talking about how especially really post-COVID, people were really struggling just to get the last money in to some of these projects that mm -hmm. were already underway, the plans were made, and they said, we just need some assistance. And so we put aside 1.5 for that purpose, mm -hmm. and then it's, it's a competitive process, but you, we, when you thrive, we thrive, right? right? It's, it's, all, it's a symbiotic relationship. Sure. And so just a continuing dialogue as to what you're seeing and what the needs are, it's really helpful as a policy maker, maker then at the county to say, oh, we should think about this or initiate something to respond to a community need. And so ready and willing to do all that. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I just want to, I, I mentioned to you early, everyone I've worked with, from Maria Collins to Steve Johns to Holly Christman, they've just been terrific, and, and I'm grateful as, as a resident of Hamilton County, I'm grateful for everything you do. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I thank appreciate it. And our, our staff are rock stars. And I forgot to mention bike trails. We're starting to get in that. Oh, space. bike trails. Yeah, we're doing well, all kinds of sustainability we're, we're work. We're in the thick of a bike trail out here. I, I know. That's <laughs> so, why I mentioned it. But yeah, we, okay. are, we are looking to connect, connect, connect all the yeah, connect, all connect, connect. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you. Hey, thank you so thank much you. for thank coming. You. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yep. Thanks. All right. Uh, okay, minutes. Any, any question regarding minutes from February the 12th meeting? No. Motion and a second to adopt. So moved. Second. Mr. Ayer? Aye. Uh, Ms. Brown Knight? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Vanstone? Aye. Uh, Mr. York? Aye. All right. All right, in communications, we have uh, starting with Chief Hines' report. Uh, Chief, do you have anything you wish to say? Tell us about it. Or anybody have any questions about it? Chief? Uh, nothing this time, Mayor. I see you got a couple of nice uh, little kind of thank you notes uh, from some residents, and I think one of the one of the individuals were they the recipient of a sort of a Christmas stop in the uh, one of the credit cards? Yes. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, Chief Hines? Report. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> All right, the maintenance uh, supervisor's report. Ben, good report. I would like to commend Ben on this. this is a really good report. I appreciate your putting this together. I like the new format. Yep. I you set a high bar, Ben. <laughs> I do have a question for you. That, um, what, if you could just at some point let us know what the trees that are going to be slated to be removed are. All right. And yes. where. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just that way, when people stop me, I can say, I knew about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Barlow, any remarks, comments regarding the report? Questions? You guys got any questions? Good report? No? Bob? Everybody all right? All right. Nothing to add? All right, Mr. Holloway. <laughs> anything, anything to add about the building department's report? It looks like, are permits up or down? Looks like. It's about 
track. About on track? So we normally do about 300 a year, about 25 per month. Mm -hmm. Revenue is decent in a couple bigger projects. Okay, okay. And a few, a few rentals trickle in. And the and rental, ins email was sent up. rental yeah. inspections are proceeding, but not. Barely trickling in. Uh -huh. any, any new participants? Some of our absentee. Yeah. I, th I think from the last email we, s we sent out or you sent out, we got a f few, two or three people that hadn't applied for any, so smaller owners that, that applied for some, and that was good. How many were there last month? Was there was there even I any? think it was zero. Zero? Okay. Yeah. So we, we, we sent need to send an email. one final reminder. We did the plain view inspections. I have not sent out the reports. Um, unfortunately, last month was a busy month with a variety of other things. Uh, but it's the larger <laughs> property owners then that we're having some compliance issue yeah, with? Two, two or three of the larger ones have done zero. Uh huh. So they're, they're certainly a, a, a focus, and we'll be getting a summary of some of the plain view inspections sent. It's probably now going to be last week of March, first week of April. Okay. Remind me what the next steps are for a non compliant. It's to sending focus letters based on the plain view inspection to these owners and saying these are the defects and they need to be corrected. And, and establish a timeline and put them on a clock that when these when the work needs to get done. And then what happens when the work doesn't get done? Then Rick and Ed will be busy. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Rod, at one point I heard you were taking some, some of this to discuss with the ARB or? Yeah, we, we had a meeting. Uh, the last meeting we went through kind of a summary of some of the plain view inspections with the ARB, showed them some of the challenges with roofs, garages, historical properties. Um, so we did a session with them and I, I think there was some willingness to collaborate on helping with standards and, and appreciate some of the challenges some of the, the rental property owners have with investing in the properties okay I just wonder where that was yeah just stay where you are there for one second uh, because the next item on the list obviously is the project list and this is a new item that we're sort of initiating here studying because we're going to be doing away with the task list uh, at the end of the meeting um, Rod will of course be sort of updating this and keeping the list current I think the intent and purpose here is to basically is this informational so we all sort of know what everybody is is doing and if, should you have questions and I, I think that we don't really want to get into lengthy discussions here in council for projects see, see who, you know see who's the the head of whatever it is that they're doing and talk to them yeah good there was one item that I don't know if that was identified so that I think thank you Bill for mentioning that there's a there's a process and we said if if they think there's need for council to engage on a few items and I think Randy identified one of them and I don't know if you want to speak it now or well it's that it's the sidewalk at Dale Park that we got the sort of 90 percent matching grant so right the uh late the next round of sort is being as we saw last week is being announced uh, that we have to apply for it. and i know that we've put together a plan for that we simply need to figure out where we're going to get the money because we have to pay for the design work mm -hmm. and uh, for this mm -hmm. and obviously the 10 percent because it's 90 percent match so we need to allocate that and, and get that moving Okay, as I understand it, uh, the sort of grant that we're talking about here was for 300,000 in round numbers, something like that. And yeah. we're in a 10 percent match, it would be the, the 30,000 of which okay. approximately, and correct me if I'm wrong here with these numbers, 20,000 would be for the engineering study to determine the feasibility of the walk is. and the cost of the walk. And Chris is calculating. Am I? So, yeah. The, uh, the grant was for $350. $1, okay. So yeah, then we need to come up with thirty-five thousand to match to get to the three fifty, and then the engineering costs. And yeah, right now I estimated it's thirty at twenty thousand dollars. We just have figured out how to get from Easter Pike up to Chestnut. Yes. Okay. I think the discussion though would be, um, you, you know, where do we rank that in the list of priorities? I mean, it would be a worthwhile project. I'm certainly not commenting on that. But as I, I, I guess the one fly in the ointment, and again, you help me out here, Chris. If, um, if, we, do the, if we spend the money, we do the engineering study, and, and, and word would come back that the, 
the cost of the project is going to exceed the limit of the grant, then where are we? We're out. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the grant goes from on Pleasant Street at Marymount Avenue all the way up to Wooster Pike and then crosses over Wooster Pike. So right. we could still do, I guess, south of Wooster Pike and build that, and then we'd have to figure out what we want to do with the piece north in Dale Park right. from Wooster to Chestnut. If the expense came back too much, we could non-perform that work. I would have to talk to Sorta to see how we wanted to do that with the grant mm -hmm. and still build the sidewalk on Pleasant Street south of Wooster Pike. And just see where they would like to go with it from there. Oh, so we, yeah, so we could piecemeal it. I mean, we could at least do, yes. do part of the project for sure, at least. Okay. Okay. Hey, but Chris, the, it, the, oh, engineer, sorry. the engineering for the piece on Dale on Dogwood Park is covered by the Kleiners. So right. We don't have to account for that. Correct. The design aspect of it. Correct. The, and when okay. are we going to get design drawings? Well, that's kind of why we're bringing it up now, so because we need to start that process. So but if Kleininger's is doing it. No, 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 no. They're doing pleasant, but uh, the part that runs through Dale Park, that's what we need to get. Okay. From, from Wooster on the Pike north down side over of the Wooster. bridge along uh, Waldorf School up to Chestnut, that, that section. But I guess my question was when are we going to get the engineering drawings for Dogwood? Probably we'll start in earnest in May. So those plans are, you know, 85, 90% complete as is. We're waiting for grants to come through to see if we want to, if we have to phase it or not. So. But, but I agree with Bill. I think this is unrelated a little bit, but we need a, to get an overall priority list of where we want to spend uh, the village resources. Because I mean, I, Understood. I, I'm very nervous about we have an opportunity for grants, so we go do that. Well, maybe that isn't high on the list of what the community needs. So we just need to work our way through that. And I'm not sure what the vehicle is, but. Well, we're Chris, for be, clarification. Wouldn't that be Committee of the Whole? Just so that everybody's on the same page. You have the Dogwood piece and the Dale Park piece. The Dogwood piece and the whole project is three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Three fifty. So usually, what we think in terms of the design aspect would be about ten percent. And in the Dogwood Dale part, it's I don't know. It's roughly half and half. I think I don't. Right. About. So if it's roughly half and half, then the design <laughs> aspect for the Dale portion would be on the order of 17 might even be 15 something like that so it's uh, so if we, if we get the design drawings and this is, again is something that we do have to prioritize is it important should we do it is council going to spend the money on it but when we have that design then we have that design and then we can do it whether we then we can take the next step but it's but it's not the 35,000, it's, you know, the roughly, I'm guessing, I, I, I'm guessing, and based on how you did that estimate, right. I'm guessing it's going to be more like 15, because Chris really padded the heck out of how he put together that uh, engineering estimate. That's just my guess. That's the cost, yeah, of the engineering estimate. <coughs> Correct. That, that would be money that we would have to front up, spend. Correct. To get an estimate as to what the sidewalk is actually going to cost us. That and have it designed for whenever it is we do it. Right. But I guess what my, my, my point is, and I'm only bringing this up as a consideration, you know, like I said, if we, if we go ahead and we spend that money, and I'm not saying we should or we shouldn't at this point, and the estimate comes back and it's beyond the scope of the grant, then where are we? Same as we are with any grant when that happens. But like I said, it, Chris could could elaborate on that if, if he chose to, but I think we're getting a little into the weeds on that for a meeting like this tonight. But it, it, there, there's a lot built into that uh, that estimate. So I, I think it's gonna, I think, it, I think we have a good, solid, conservatively high estimate that went in for the grant. Okay. You agree with that, Chris? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, we'll say. I, I meant yeah. when we put it together, we in clearly wanted to do yeah, it there. Right. I wanted to make sure we were covered. Right, right. It's a very conservative estimate, so I expect the cost. We'll be able to afford it if we wanted to spend the match money. Mm -hmm. 
you know, well, I, I mean, if, if, if we can afford it, we can get the grant money, then I would think so. But I'm just saying, if we spend the money for the engineering work and, it, and, the, and the, the estimate to do it exceeds the grant, then we've spent the money on an engineering study for later, I guess, or I mean, it's, no. Right. It's just a consideration. Maybe it's, I'm, I'm not, you know, we, something I think we should, we should talk about. Agreed. Oh. Yeah. Anybody else got a thought? No? All right. I, I think the next step would be maybe a health and rec meeting to propose something to council. If you were to assign that to Bill to health and rec to actually look at that and, and make a uh, recommendation to council as to how we should fund this or if, and a, you, and a, uh, and a proposed schedule and priority level, mm -hmm. let council consider that. Well, I, I would think that health and rec would recommend that we do this. I don't think I'm taking a leap there since we applied to SORTA for this project. Mm -hmm. I think they assumed that we would do it. I frankly assume that we would do it. So I'm not sure what a, another committee report, if that would make a difference. But if that's the process, we want to follow. What's, what's the next step for the two? We, we have to do an engineering study. Right, so is that what you're asking? What is plan. being asked for today? We would have to do an engineering study and of which we would have to front the I mean, I can get a quote for the study from a consultant and okay. then bring that back, and then you'd have a number to yeah. discuss. I think it would be helpful if we had it, if we, if we had okay. a number here, because I know we're, we're well, sort of good. grasping yeah, at good. numbers here, yeah. so we can really make it a determination. Okay. Yeah. The unit committee has to recommend that to council. Well, we can, we can do it that way. I yeah, think we can we get do. the number, and, okay. yeah. and Randy, we can do an evaluation and yeah, make a recommendation to council then. Come back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know Chris back in um, maybe even April of last year we had gone through these right. mm -hmm. and I don't know how relevant these numbers still are. I mean that's what the grant was based on. Okay. As far as so. Okay. The, the I mean they're they're still current bag, other than the cost the of construction. Bag over there? Yeah, the I, I think <laughs> at yes. this point we just need to maybe have the discussion in full council on whether or not we want to support the allocate the funds for the engineering study because I think there was already a conversation around the grant and the endorsement of the project. So now it's a question of whether right, council is going to approve the funds. So my recommendation is we get the bid. See yeah, we get a number. We get a number. We know what we're, you yeah, know. I'm fine with that. I okay, yeah, I, th I think, yeah. I, Either way is fine with me. We yeah. agree to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. What, one more comment on the t project list. When we... When we finish the appropriations at the end of the month, could you g make sure you get all those numbers and update the dollars in your in your task list? Yeah. Does Rob have that information? Kelly. Kelly yeah. will have it once right. it's approved, right? Well, I'm sorry. Appropriations. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I'll get with Kelly to get the, the numbers. At, at the end of the month, when, okay. after we do the appropriations. Yeah. What's an appropriation? All right, Mr. Ayer, do you have a narrative on the pool repair? Um, yes, very briefly. There's a um, request for council approval because the amount is over the uh, $5,000 spending limit. Previously in January, we approved the permanent improvements aspects to the pool work that Shamrock Enterprises quoted for us to do that we worked out back and forth a few times to make sure we were doing the things that we thought were the high value items for uh, um, restoring and maintaining the pool and um, so we've approved the permanent improvement aspects and some of the other items are fall under routine maintenance and repair and uh, that's what we're asking for approval tonight and those include uh, what's done every few years you go around the edge of the gutter on the lap pool and you re-caulk it the lap pool has one area that has been prone to needing um, patching um, that's routine maintenance and repair this time we uh, we're going to go deeper and we're going to install an aluminum mesh and the idea is is that 
perhaps we're going to make a long-term fix this time around, spend a little bit more money, but maybe not have to do it every three years like we do now. And then the other, uh, the other item, um, principal item on the um, uh, repairs is, um, let's see, I'm trying to remember. Um, I can't remember what the other item is. No. Oh, painting the stripes in the lap pool, uh, the uh, lanes and targets. Um, they're, they're going to, once they do the repair, the paint job in the pool itself just needs touch up. They'll touch that up, touch up other areas, and then they repaint the black lines. And when I say targets, the spot that you hit when you uh, turn at the pool. And with that done, it really pops and makes the pool look great. So those were the items that uh, are requested for approval out of our operating funds that fall under routine repairs. Any questions? We all understand. So Shamrock's doing all of this? Yes. And I'm sorry, all in, it's? 24, 7, So it's 15 eight. plus 8? That's uh -huh. Okay. Right. So it's 24,700. Correct, but we've already approved the permanent improvements part right. of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the operational cost? That's the eight. The eight. Eight, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard to read. It's hard to read. Yeah, it didn't it didn't come out okay. so good. No problem. It's no problem. Eight yeah. thousand. Okay. okay. All right, we all good? Motion is second to approve. So moved. Second. Mr. Ayer? Aye. Mr. Brown Knight? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Vanstone? Aye. Mr. York? Aye. All right. Can I ask a quick question? Um, sure. Are these, in, in terms of our, uh, the operating budget for the pool, do we have these types of repairs built into our operating budget? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. One, one other quick comment. Let's just make sure Shamrock ties in with Rod uh, to make sure if any permits are required that it all happens. We'll do it. Yep. And we've done a lot of business with Shamrock, so. I understand. I'm, we have yeah. the advantage of that. I just don't want to have an over. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, wasn't. Right. I, don't, I, it's good. I haven't checked if any of these things will need permits, but I will do that. Thank you. When the lining work gets started soon? Monday. Monday. Oh, wow. It was going to be Monday today, but it got pushed back a week they didn't have all their materials yet okay okay all right uh, the financial reports I must say quite a good job on the financial reports oh, thank you very much mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're not a CPA you can't read them but those well <laughs> you know problem with the PDF <laughs> yeah they're all they all look good any questions regarding the financial reports is there anything of note Kelly that you want to flag not particularly. I mean, the one thing that we do need to next meeting, we'll be going over the uh, operating budget. So I'll be sending all that out, pre-read stuff. Anybody else? Good. All right, the last item. Uh, we have uh, sort of a resume here from Mr. Zemke, who we are going to be tonight nominating for the Architectural Review Board. Um, I think we're quite fortunate, I believe, to to get Doug. Um, Y'all had a chance to look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, the resolution will be coming up later. I mean, if you have any questions for him? No? <laughs> no? <laughs> Glad to have you. I'm Glad to have you, yeah. you betcha. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't want him basket. You only knew what you were uh -uh. getting into. No, no, don't anybody scare him off. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, permission to address council. I see we have quite the crowd here tonight. Uh, anyone wishing to get up other than Miss Treehouse, who did an excellent job, by the way? Thank you. And then I just have copies for 
I'm not new to this audience. Um, you guys have seen me over the past five years regarding the issues with the poll and Duke Energy on Murray Avenue. Um, I'm not here this evening to engage further on that five-year saga. Uh, however, I am here to extend my disappointment in actions or lack thereof of the management of this project and to finality by council and the mayor. I'm submitting a record of copies of communications um, and my concerns regarding the unsafely, unsafe, unsightly and unsafe wires that were left behind for the wooden poles and I've actually included images for your review. There are nine pages of images and there are 16 email communications um, beginning on July 5th of 2023. Sadly of those communications, 12 of those emails are just my request for please respond, what can I do, what do we need to do, and all of those have, were gone unanswered. It's just been a continued me dogging trying to get an answer for that. As a resident, um, the exhaustive and unnecessary efforts on my part to secure just a simple response I find unacceptable. Um, but it pales in my comparison to my efforts to secure action and resolution. On December 1st, I reported a safety issue with um, me witnessing several children after school hanging on the wires uh, across from my house that were still hanging from the wall to the ground or from the poles to the ground. Um, I was finally told after the first on the 22nd of uh, January that the maintenance part department would come out and, re and take care of it and put an en encasement over it, which actually if anybody ever looked at what was the issue was, there's no way the maintenance department could possibly take care of that that has to come from the utility even I know that um, but I don't think anybody even looked to see so that comment was um, really just out of order I was also told that spectrum had taken care of their wires which in fact is untrue the orange wires belong to spectrum um, and then it was suggested that I reach out to Alta fiber on my own um, which I did uh, and I have to say it was a wonderful experience on Friday I called, first phone call was answered by Mr. Bob Walters. No knowledge of any issue whatsoever. No understanding of what the problem was. Didn't even know who I was talking about. So it was clearly a surprise to them that this was an issue. Um, within four hours, I had a response back from him. Taking ownership, I sent him images. He responded by one o'clock, called them at nine in the morning, images, and he bullets through a list of those polls that I showed him. This poll, this poll, this poll. This is ours, I'll fix it. This, this, this. Okay, so it wasn't that hard. So I'm wondering why did we have to wait all of these months to get an answer? And I feel like it was just overlooked. Um, so for eight months, back and forth of nothing basically resulted in nothing. Um, it's been an issue that has continued of a game of who's on first followed by with smoke and mirrors on deck as far as I'm concerned because so and so is taking care of it. And I don't think there's anybody in this room who hasn't had some kind of involvement in this whole saga for the past five years. Um, the only person I can honestly say that has given me an honest answer regarding resolution and, and uh, inquiries to this issue is Dr. Lewis who in a council meeting, stood up and said, you know what, I'm not gonna engage in this because I don't think it's an effective use of my time. I didn't like the answer, but I gotta tell you, I respect her for giving me an honest answer. Okay, fine. Instead of just pushing it around, emailing point and click to somebody else to resolve it. So thank you for that. I always appreciate an honest answer, even if it's not what I wanna hear. Um, what I'm asking this council at this point is to pick up where I left off. I'm, I'm providing Public Works with the polls, the communications of what they've said at Alta Fiber, what's doing, can somebody please follow this up with them. Duke, I believe, has handled most of everything at this point, although the phone number I was given to reach out to Duke is not a, a real phone number, it's, it goes into nowhere, so I have not spoken to Duke. Um, but Spectrum has work to do as well. I, I really, would like to resolve this after five years. One of my neighbors had three babies in the course of the time that it has taken to get this resolved. 
um, if this is an indication of how our village is going to manage and maintain a multi-use path, which is going to be installed right on that way on that pathway, I, I'm questioning my support of, of that particular initiative. So please get involved. I'm asking you to. I don't care who, what, when, and why. I just want it done. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'd love to come to council and stand before you as I to kind of slow down with my own business and say, what can I do something positive in this village besides chasing down Duke Energy, Spectrum, Alta Fiber, and the councils that keep changing positions all the way through? And that's really all I have. Thank you. No. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anyone else? No? All right. All right, motion to pay the bills. Any, any question regarding the bills? No? We good? Motion to pay the bill. Yes, I so moved. Second. Second. Mr. Ayer? Aye. Mr. Brown Knight? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Vanstone? Aye. Mr. York? Aye. All right. All right. I think we have two committee reports this council. I've got. Hmm? Can, I, can you pass that back if I'm going to read it? Okay. And Susan, do you have your report signed? No, I didn't get that signed. If you can have your members sign that, please. So, safety committee report. I don't see it. I thought I read it last. I, I did one. Oh, I'm sorry. Public works. Thank you. I was like, oh, oh no. You got I, it? I needed to read it. Got it's it. Signed. Okay. My so, apologies. Okay. I knew safety, I was missing one. Safety committee, we're up here. <laughs> The safety committee met on Fe Wednesday, February 14th. Present were members Matthew Ayer, Rob Bartlett, and Randy York, as well as Mayor Brown, Chief Hines, and Fiscal Officer Kelly Rankin. Um, somehow I left off that Joni was there too. Chief Hines presented a recommendation to hire a new officer. Um, no, uh, never mind. She wasn't there. Okay. Chief Pines presented a recommendation to hire a new officer in the in early second quarter 2024. Uh, the police department has identified a highly qualified candidate for the position based on previous interviews from the last opening. And um, Chief Hines recommends this hire to fill in for an officer who's presently on an extended medical leave. And then next is bring the unit to its normal, full, active force of the chief plus uh, nine um, officers and um, lieutenant and so forth, plus the school resource officer. And um, with that, this staffing level, um, it's a recommendation of the committee, minimizes the need for frequent schedule shifts, which negatively impacts the morale of our department. Um, this would more readily maintain two officers per shift coverage in the village. Um, it minimizes the need for village paid overtime to cover normal shifts and will also help smooth the transition at the, the end of this year when two of our most senior members retire. So at the end of the year, we won't have two people to bring on and train immediately. We'll have one who's already been trained since the beginning of the second quarter. Um, so after discussion, the safety committee unanimously agreed to recommend to council the hire of a full-time officer in early second quarter 2024 um, in accordance with the chief's proposal and uh, submitted by uh, myself as chair, Rob and Randy. All right, you've heard the report. Any additional discussion? Chief, do you have anything you want to add to this or say? No, just thank you to the uh, committee for... Uh listening to our need and to council for considering it. I have a question and you may get being a newbie you may be tired of me asking this question when we go reach into the general fund I'd like to know what the because this will be a one-time 
cost, as I understand it. Correct. And so I th would like to ask a question, which I think we need to ask on every appropriation, is what is the impact on the general fund, and that includes uh, salaries and fringes. And I'm, I'm, I think it's a good idea, Chief. I want to let you know that. But I just, I think we need to ask that question as we go forward, that's all. And the answer, we do have the answer to that question, and it's approximately $85,000 this year. Which will take the Which balance of the general fund at the end of the year to? Well, we'll we will appropriate, I mean, that was one of the things when we adjust the budget for yep. 2024, for the permanent appropriations. Okay. That 90 will be, or 85, 90, I just found That's an all-in number. Mm -hmm. Right. We'll be you know, added to the operating budget for the police department. Okay. But we have yes, I, want, I, I want us to do that. Again, it's an important question. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a big number. Okay. Paul, you guys for being a newbie. Okay. Don't ever have to do that. We were all there once, right? I don't remember. Anything else? No. All right, a motion and a second to accept the report. So moved. <clears throat> Second. Second. Are we going to get a second in here tonight? <laughs> Mr. Ayer? Aye. Ms. Brown Knight? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Vanstone? Aye. Mr. York? Aye. All right, we'll accept the report. All right, Public Works. The Public Works and Service Committee met on uh, March 6th at 427 p.m. In attendance were Committee Chairman Bob Vanstone, Committee Member Randy York, Village Fiscal Officer Randy Kelly Rankin, and Mayor Brown. The first topic of discussion was to uh, discuss the application to the PCO to start the village gas and electric aggregation. After some discussion, Ms. York moved the village to pass a resolution to file for the gas and electric ag aggregation of the PCO. Mr. Vanstone seconded the motion. Also discussed was the trash and recycling service needed for 2025. The current contract with Rumpke expires at the end of 2024. The village cannot enter into an agreement with a Center for Local Government, CFLG, until the start of 2026. Ms. York moved that the village should pass a resolution to have the, physical, the village fiscal officer get bids for an annual cra trash contract with multi-year extensions. This would permit a cost comparison between the cost of extending the village contract, or contract with the cost of working with CFLG for a contract, uh, trash contract prior to 2026. Mr. Van Stone seconded the motion. The committee discussed the options for LED street light conversion approved by the ARB on October uh, 3rd, 2023. The King Luminaire prop proprietary unit that's a bulb and a globe. Uh, installation would cost $695 a unit, while the alternate bulb and globe installation would be about $300 a unit. The replacement cost after 10 years of service would be $695 for the King Luminary unit as compared to $100 for the alternate bulb. The committee needs to get the exact number of uh, Marymount streetlights from the service department in addition to any cost of additional hardware needed to install, install the alternate LED lamps. The committee will not make a recommendation on the path forward until the needed technical information is available and a well-publicized evening meeting of the committee is convened to assure adequate community in input. The meeting was adjourned at 5.15 p.m. Okay, you've heard the report. Any discussion here? I think one of the issues, um, we, we really don't have good alignment yet on which bulb we're going with or which lamp fixture we're going with, correct? That's correct. We won't make that decision until we get the exact number of poles so we know the total cost. And also, I just talked to Ben on the, uh, I heard some words mentioned I think it was from uh, Build a Camp. There need to be some grinding or something to use the uh, the modular version, the second version. 
No, the first version. For King Luminaire, I thought okay. they just came over the top. Uh, there is some that are smaller. Uh, they're, they're, they're different kind of bases, uh, and sometimes you have to grind around there just to get that I, fit on there. Okay. Right. I just want him. I, I asked Ben to have a discussion with uh, with Bill to, uh -huh. to what all do we need to do? Make sure we understand it all, and, and so that we're not keep coming back for more and more nickels and dimes to complete the project. Sure. But we've not made a decision on that. It, on on, on it, which one it's going to be. Which one it's going to be. Yeah. And we'll put the cost and the other things back together to the committee. Okay. But Randy wanted to make sure because there's a uh, some strong feelings among some of the yes. uh, citizen lamp committee yes. that they have the off. That's why the evening meeting. Yeah. They have the opportunity to express their uh, their desires at that meeting. This I, is I want to get I want to get the real cost together, not just well, it's sort of like this. Yeah. Right. Then this is a big decision, obviously, because you know this, these are the lampposts that will be in the historic district of the of the village. You know that we're going to be replacing. Well, they'll and be I, also. Uh, well, I, right. I, a right. lot of them. Ultimately, yeah. And I think, I think getting this decision right, I hope, comes down to more than just a money decision. There's an aesthetic aspect and quality to this that I'm just asking that we consider when we finally get around to making this decision. Now, Bob is doing a very good job to get, you know, there is going to be a cost difference, and I, I can tell you. But I just, I'm hoping that this decision just doesn't come down ultimately just to money. Susan, you're laughing at me, but. <laughs> no, she's laughing with you. <laughs> no, I love, I, I mean, I, I don't know the distinction, so. Okay. I'm looking they're they're all still up at the old town square. The, yeah. the King Luminaire three options. The, the King Luminaire is in front of the Lockhart's house. Mm -hmm. The alternate bulb is on the north end of the old square where uh, Oak comes down to the old square. Oak and Chestnut there. Yeah, the, at the, where they intersect. On, yeah. So you, you can go some evening and look at it yourself. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> After the meeting. Yeah, after the meeting, yeah. I'll, no, I'm no. What, <laughs> your, your marathon I'll, I'll take you over. Couldn't, couldn't have done this before daylight savings yeah. time, yes. right? Yeah. One, one more comment, Bill. The, sure. Um, the uh, uh, resolution on the, on the garbage contract we're going to bring here in two weeks. It won't be tonight. Okay. Okay. Well, we need the resolution. Yeah, that's that's well, coming up tonight. Can I make a comment don't on that? that I I don't know if there needs to be some clarification on this whole aggregation situation. I don't know if maybe Dan or Maria want to kind of do some clarification. Thanks, Denise. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Dieters and I have talked about this, but I just wanted you to tell them a little bit about the application so that sure. we have a better understanding of what's I, going on at this stage and where we go from here. Exactly. So what? kind of has happened at this point is once the once the ballot issue passed we started working on the certification had the two meetings um, the this is basically the ballot or the the certification for Marymount to become an aggregator that's where we are now and that's what issue we're asking to pass and if if you see your way clear to pass as an emergency that'll save you 30 more days because if we have to wait two more readings and if uh, something would happen and there's no quorum or something like that, um, I would say that, that it would be better to move this thing as quickly as possible to let us get to the work of pricing the term, doing all the other things that, that I can put in front of you to say, hey, let's move forward this or let's not move forward this. But until you're certified under the PUCO, they won't even give us the list from Duke so that we can figure out how to bundle the RFP for the suppliers. I, my understanding was there's one more step in the process of that, that we need to get some information, PUCO, of you and alternate aggregators, if that's the right term, um, uh, that, that might service the community. We're under contract. They were, we were, we've been on a contract since last year. 
I have not seen that in it. I'm happy to provide. I think we sent it over, actually. Okay. So no, go ahead. Well, I, I, if I could just interrupt. If, if council would choose to go ahead and amend it to be an emergency, I think you could have the first reading tonight. I do not think you can pass it on emergency because it hasn't been put out to the That's public. That's fine. I'm that just saying at your next passed. meeting. You can save the time is all I'm saying. We, we wouldn't. We wouldn't go through this whole process unless we were already under contract with the, with the village. That, and, that's, and we did that last year prior to the election and everything else. Did, oh, let, let me ask, so if we have the first reading tonight, then the next council we can have the second, third reading on emergency, finish it out that way? Right, if yeah. council chooses okay. to make an emergency, we would have the first reading, I did, change the resolution I, to be passed as an emergency. For Ed. Are we under contract? Yeah, we do. Uh, have a yeah, I have a copy we, of we it. do have a kind of budget. When you and I talked, to I got yeah. the impression that uh, that once we get through it and you get the pricing, if there's another aggregator out there that presents us with better prices, we have the option to go with that other company. Is that correct? Well, the, as far as us as a consultant, we're going to go out and get all the pricing right. from one of five or six suppliers. So all the pricing will be will I, come through us. Right. I, I couldn't find a record, and I'm. I'm a newbie at this. Uh, I went back and looked, just look for a resolution or something that you were under contract. And all I could find is a resolution to put it on the ballot. Now, if I'm wrong, I, I make mistakes. You know, that's, that's not an issue. But I'd like to get a, that we, we signed a contract or Ed looked at it and okayed it. Or, yeah, I looked at this. I, yeah, we Ed and I have talked about talked about it late last summer. Yeah, yeah, I do. And then we talked about it pretty recently yeah. too. And then we talked about it again. Uh, what? So, what's your question? I'm not sure. I couldn't find a record of where the village signed a contract with these folks. That's all. I think the question. I'm, I'm looking question, at this. Is it they Kelly's would signature? Be the aggregator. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is it? Does it look like my signature? Looks like some alien signed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's yours. It's me. Yep. Is that, that who you dealt with last year, Kelly? That yeah. That time. Well, that's me signing it as. This was in July. Dated the 13th of July of last yeah, year. Yeah, so, well, was I signed? Uh, I was interim Correct. at that point in time. So that would be me signing as interim fiscal officer. All right. Okay, so. Right, so so we, have, we have a contract. We cannot. Well, I'd like to. I'd like to clarify that we do have a contract first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it certainly does appear to me that we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It appears to me I that we do. I thought there was a committee report. Okay. That's why I was, and I if, if we do, do we want to apply with PUCO for aggregation? I guess that's the issue tonight, correct? Right. And I think the, the committee recommends we that we do. do, I, we do. I, would say that, yeah. I would say that if, if Ms. Van Pelt is correct, which I, I think she probably is because of the two-day notice, because you have not given the two-day notice on an emergency, uh, 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 resolution, it would probably have to be kicked to the next meeting to do it as an emergency. Well, I we can, we can, I, so I understand, we can have the first reading tonight, you could. Yes. and then we'll have the second and third sure. reading next time sure. on emergency Absolutely. and conclude But here's the way. thing I'll tell you, uh, Councilman. The, the thing about Energy Alliance is, is in, we represent 65 other municipalities in, in Ohio. And I will sit and I will tell you what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to come and do the whole process for you and come back with price, term, condition for your folks. And, and I'll give you a list of everything around here, like Fairfax, who just, who just, we just signed the contract with Fairfax for their new program. And this is a, a, really a transparent process in, in how we present everything to the council. And as soon as we get to that point, where we are right now is we can't do anything until we finish with the PUCO. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And let, let me just go on the record. I, th I really respect your company. I thought we'd be with you, but I thought we had to do an evaluation first. And I've been, mis you know, I didn't realize that the contract had already been signed, so I apologize. I apologize, too. I would have sent it to you if I'd have thought that that was a yeah. miscommunication. I would have sent it right over. Because I was told that we had to 
do the PSEO, then look at candidates, then then select one. Yeah. So well, I, I would I would tell you that that the reason you do it is because we've set up communities on gas and electric over a hundred times through the PUCO. We pay all the fees. We do all the legwork. We pay all the lawyers to get all that stuff done. So mm -hmm. this community doesn't have one dollar come out of their pocket for the whole process. Good. Not only that, we did our best to inform all the residents through the election as to what this was and, and as much as as much as folks will listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I understand. You gave us a Yeah. So, uh, so uh, that said, um, if you if you choose to do the first reading, which is great, and then do the next one as the emergency, what the, then the process will be, we'll send the whole packet to you. Also, you don't have to you, you, Putting that packet together is not something that an administration in any municipality would want to do. It's mm. a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. So we'll get that packet. You'll designate someone to sign off on that application. Uh, I think it's probably Mr. Ty. I think the mayor will sign off. The mayor can sign off. It's anybody can sign off on it. It'll sit up there for 30 days, and then we'll get a notice that you're a certified aggregator. Aggregator. We'll come back after that with uh, a couple of forms to get signed with regard to getting the information from Duke, and that takes a couple weeks. And then we'll put the package together, we'll send it out, we'll come back, and we'll give you a full scorecard as to what these folks will do for Marymount and then some surrounding communities, obviously, where they sit so you know. So, and, and the, the term of the agreement will be determined by the council. The terms and conditions we'll work through to make sure people can come and go out of the program as they please without any fee of any kind. This won't cost your <laughs> residents ever with, with regard to a fee. So that's, that's, the, that's the bottom line. That's, that's what we do. And then, and then as soon as the council decides what they want to do, We'll, we'll move forward and we'll do all those contracts and get them to you, Mr. McTie, and you'll go from there. Just a quick question. I remember talking to Maria once, and I thought you said every two years we had to re... Uh, pre-certify? Pre-certify you guys. Or is that accurate? Yeah. You, so you, you said so we need to keep it on our calendar, a, a two-year cycle. That's all I'm trying to do. We'll do it for you. Generally, we always recertify and pay the pay the fees to do so, and but we'll let you. I mean, you'll be able to see when that is. Plus, the uh, village gets notice from the PCO, and it's kind of tricky because you have to file that stuff more than thirty days ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, so if your due date's May first and you don't put it in by April first, you're late. So it's that's why I want to get it on a calendar. We'll get we'll get you so we we'll can get, you get fixed those up. resolutions. Past well in advance. Yeah, we'll make sure we'll make sure that that okay. you'll have all those dates and, and, and the you. notice will come always to the village and we get one also. So great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Uh, so motion. So you call me. Motion is second to accept the report. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Ayer. Aye. Mr. Brown Knight. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Uh, Mr. Van Stone. Aye. Mr. York. Aye. All right. All right, the first resolution. And this is the first reading to appoint Douglas Semke as a member of the Architectural Review Board for years 2024 and 2025. All right, that's first reading. We'll have the second reading next time. Okay, this is first reading, authorizing an increase in the building permit schedule of fees. First reading, we'll have the second reading next time. All right, this is the first reading to authorize adoption of a premium only insurance plan. That was the first reading, correct? Correct. Uh -huh. All right, this is a first reading, a resolution authorizing the village to file applications to Public Utilities Commission of Ohio for gas and electric aggregation. All right, first reading. Okay, next and we're meeting. gonna change that to be an emergency Same. for next meeting. Next time, uh-huh. Okay. All right. Uh, this is third reading an ordinance creating Marymount Racket Club Board. All right, third reading. Motion and a second uh, to adopt. So moved. Second. Mr. Ayer. 
Aye. Sproud Knight? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Van Stowe? Aye. Mr. York? Aye. All right, that will be accepted. Okay, this is first reading to amend sections 151.125 and 151.127 relating to signage. All right, first reading, next reading, next time. This is a first reading to amend section 151.087, permitted obstructions and required yards, and add new section 151.07.1.2.3.4.5.6.7. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you missed one. You got all those points in there? I don't know. Is there a point you're trying to make, Tony? Yeah, you making a point? <laughs> All right, that, is the, that was the first reading, and hopefully this was the last reading of, for tonight. Any other quick, quick comments before I adjourn? I got nothing. <laughs> nothing. Go. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.